The southern ape genus, Australopithecine, with the famous fossilized specimen Lucy dating back approximately 3.2 million years, is considered the root of our human species. At this point, the human genus, scientifically known as Homo, evolved, originating from a species that settled in the East and South Africa during the Pleistocene epoch, also known as the Ice Age. Around 2.4 to 1.5 million years ago, this ingenious human was Homo habilis, the wielders of Oldowan stone tool technology, who later evolved into the upright Homo erectus. Contributing to the formation of modern humans, Homo sapiens, the renowned British paleoanthropologists Lewis and Mary Lakey, along with their son Jonathan, discovered the first fossils of Homo habilis in 1960 in the Olduvai Gorge, formerly Oldowan Gorge, within the Great Rift Valley of Tanzania, East Africa. The name of this species emerged four years later. Still, at Olduvai Gorge and the surrounding areas, the Lakeys had previously found stone tools from the late 1930s. Therefore, the discovery of ancient human fossils with larger brains and more dexterous hands than ape ancestors in 1960 provided compelling evidence for the evolution of the first species in the Homo genus. Homo habilis. They were called humans because their hands were skilled in crafting and using tools in daily life. Specific details will be explored in the following section. Why do archaeologists determine that Homo habilis settled in East and South Africa? Simply because fossils of this species have been found in areas now known as Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia, and South Africa. Among these, Lake Turkana and Kubi Fora in northern Kenya and Olduvai Gorge in northern Tanzania are the most crucial collection sites. Homo habilis did not leave Africa like Homo erectus, so their fossils are concentrated in this region. Homo habilis possesses many characteristics that distinguish them from ape ancestors. They have a small body, only two-thirds the size of modern humans, with an average height ranging from 1 to 1.4 meters and a weight of about 32 to 35 kilograms. They distinctly differentiated between genders with females considerably smaller than males. Homo habilis has a small, short face with less protrusion than their direct ancestors, and their eyebrow ridge forms a gentle arch. The relatively large brain has a volume ranging from 500 to 800 cc, 1.5 times that of an ape's brain, and constitutes nearly 2% of the body weight. Their teeth are arranged in an arch with small molars closer in size to modern humans, although their premolars are still relatively large. The Homo habilis species has long hands and short feet. The slightly curved finger bones in the middle of the fingers, with a balanced proportion found by archaeologists, demonstrate the ability to grasp objects accurately and with control. This was the basis for them to craft and use simple stone tools, becoming the masters of Oldowan stone tool technology. Along with changes in hand bone structure, fossils of Homo habilis shin bones and foot bones prove that they walked on two legs, adopting an upright walking posture. This is unsurprising since Lucy, the fossilized specimen of the southern ape genus preceding Homo habilis, had already walked on two legs. The only difference is that Lucis species walk less proficiently and may not have covered as much distance as Homo habilis. Clever humans lived in large and small groups with clear hierarchies in the grasslands of East and South Africa. It's possible that they still lived in trees. Their diet primarily consisted of plants such as various berries, leaves, and roots. However, due to the increasingly dry and cold climate, they had to supplement their diet with raw meat to sustain energy levels. Ironically, clever humans did not fancy tough and hard to chew foods like hard seeds, tough roots, or dried meat. They would only consume such items if necessary. The inclusion of meat in their diet is believed to be the driving force behind Homo habilis creation of stone tools to butcher and carve meat from the carcasses they found in their surroundings. Why found instead of hunted? Simply because clever humans had not yet begun hunting.
During that time, they played the role of opportunistic scavengers, obtaining meat from carcasses left by larger carnivorous species. If there was any hunting, they would likely catch insects or small, docile herbivores like gazelles. Compared to the southern ape genus, Homo habilis consumed a significant amount of meat. They crafted and ground stones into tools for bone chopping and crude meat cutting. Occasionally, they used these tools to crack hard nuts for the kernel. These tools are known as Old Awan stone tools, named after the excavation site where archaeologists discovered them. Alongside the discovery of stone tools, archaeologists found numerous animal remains in the vicinity of the tool excavation site. In reality, asserting with 100% certainty that Homo habilis was the sole practitioner of Old Awan stone tool technology is challenging due to the scarcity of evidence from this period. The affirmation is based on finding Homo habilis remains near the area where stone tools were discovered. While the southern ape genus also showed signs of using rudimentary tools like stone implements for survival, and upright walking Homo erectus and the contemporaneous Homo rudolfensis, both living in the same location, could also be potential inventors of Old Awan stone tools. However, current archaeological evidence leans towards Homo habilis more than other human species. Regardless, it is certain that, over nearly a million years of existence, Homo habilis used rudimentary stone tools to a proficient level for survival under increasingly harsh weather conditions. Did clever humans know how to use fire? The answer is likely no because science has not yet found evidence indicating their knowledge of fire use. Regarding social relations, it remains a challenging question to answer due to the insufficient evidence. Until now, only upright walking humans have been recognized as a species living in a one-to-one -one spousal relationship. While preceding species in the Homo genus are assumed to follow a polygamous polyandrous arrangement. However, who knows, time might reveal a different answer. Clever humans very likely communicated with each other through simple and concise spoken language. The mystery surrounding the first species of the Homo genus, Homo habilis, still has much for archaeologists to explore. As soon as new information becomes available, Flow of Times will continue to share insights. We eagerly anticipate your feedback and contributions from those interested in the origin and evolution of humans. Thank you and see you in the upcoming video.